Evelina Fernandez is uh, an actor and playwright with Latino Theater Company at the new LATC. something or stressing about something, you sometimes dream about it? Well, the other night I dreamed I was giving this talk today and that nobody was here to listen to me. <laughs> In other words, I dreamed that nobody cared about what I had to say. But in my dream, there was one guy there. And, and Terrence was there because um, only because he had to be. <laughs> and I think the other guy was there because he claimed to have been at every talk, and I think he was trying to break or establish a record of some sort, um, so he could go around saying, I sat through every single provocateur at LA Stage Alliance Day. And as this dream went on, I realized that the guy in my dream was Terrence's boyfriend, and him sticking around made it made even more sense than the record. <laughs> anyway, Terrence's boyfriend in my dream was tall and nice looking, and I commented to him that he looked like my son. <laughs> that he reminded me of my son or something to that effect. And Terrence was offended by that and he said, no, he doesn't. <laughs> and I remember thinking in my dream that maybe Terrence didn't think my son was good looking. <laughs> Which kind of pissed me off. <laughs> because then he said my son looked like somebody else. And I re remember thinking that that guy was an ugly techie. And my son certainly did not look like him. <laughs> and then, Terrence gave me the topic for my five-minute talk because I didn't send him my topic by the due date. <laughs> Which is probably why I had this weird dream in the first place. <laughs> and the topic was trolley cars on Broadway. <laughs> you know, the downtown Broadway trolley cars. You know, they're bringing back the street car and all that. And I remember thinking, what the fuck do I know about Hollywood? <laughs> what the fuck am I going to say about them for five minutes? And then I woke up feeling anxious and stressed, and I, I tossed and turned for a bit, and, and while I laid there wondering why I had had this dream, I thought maybe it all goes back to how I feel about L.A. theater. And my assumption that most of the people that would be here today at the L.A. Theater Alliance Day would be the same people I see at the Ovation Awards, <laughs> meaning mostly white people. And they probably won't care to hear what I have to say anyway, because what I want to talk about today is diversity, or inclusion, or equality, or equity, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> what I want to talk about, to, well, what I want to ask is if we live in the most diverse city, or one of the most diverse cities in the world, why don't our theaters reflect that? I know it's not intentional, but just like anything, if you don't think about it, if you don't care about it, if you don't make it a priority, it won't happen. I'm, I'm a member of the Latino Theater Company. We're an ensemble that's been together for 28 years. We run the Los Angeles Theater Center in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. And our mission is to produce diverse theater, <coughs> dance and music programming. We're committed to diversity, and we take pride in that because the reason we exist is because a long time ago, during the first incarnation of the LATC, the artistic director back then, Bill Bushnell, believed in diversity. And way back then, in the 80s, he produced black, Latino, Asian, experimental, the classics, and white plays. 
He established creative laboratories for black, Latinos, Asian artists, and that's how we became the Latino Theater Lab. We have a slot in every season, and when we became the operators of the LATC seven years ago, we committed to diverse theater to continue the tradition at the LATC. In six seasons, we produced Latino plays, black plays, Asian plays, plays about mentally and physically challenged people, LGBT plays, Jewish plays, Muslim plays, young people, old people, and yes, we even do white plays. But white people don't come. But that's a whole other topic <laughs> that we don't have time for today. In 2012, over 135 artists and arts organizations were served by being produced or presented or given access to affordable or donated space for rehearsals, performances, and cultural events. And over 45,500 people attended events at the LATC. Between two, 2010 and 2012, we produced 12 diverse plays, hired 95 diverse actors, and 25 stage managers under the Actors' Equity Association Agreement. LATC has consistently been recommended by critics and audiences alike, with shows garnering many LA Times Critics' Choice, Backstage Critics Pick, Alley Weekly Pick of the Week, and many Ovation Award nominations and recommendations over the years. So, why aren't theaters in LA more diverse? Last year, the American Theater Magazine posed this question on its Facebook page. They asked, does every theater have a responsibility to be as diverse as possible? And here are some of the responses. I think they have a responsibility to make sure they are not discriminating. Another one says, well, <clears throat> since theaters routinely produce less than 50% of the work of a group that comprises at least 50% of the population, meaning women, I think it would be nice if any of them made an attempt at diversity. Then there's this. There's genuine diversity when a company is diverse to begin with and tells stories and employs people who represent the full spectrum of that community's culture. Then there is forced diversity, which is when you see the success of minority created theater and you try to replicate it and draw it in the same audience. Is diversity a philosophy, a mission, or is it a money interest? Somebody else said, theater should be as diverse as their audiences and communities, starting with recognizing that there are a lot of women out there. And then there's this one that's very, very interesting. He said, no, diversity is a choice like political correctness or being as green as possible, unless diversity or any other ideal is part of a company's bylaws, there is nothing, no responsibility, obligation that somehow holds a theater accountable. And then there's this last one. No, it does not. If it has a large or even stable subscriber base, then the theater has to listen to what its audience wants to see and pay for. I think many theaters fail because they are producing only what they want and not producing what their patrons or potential patrons want. And if you are a theater whose mission is to produce only, say, American classics, then diversity is a much more limited word in their world, and therefore their responsibility is to produce a more limited and less diverse creative landscape. So all of this is very interesting. I mean, you, you can 
see all the different opinions about about whether or not theaters have an obligation to be diverse. So what is my point? My point is that doing diverse theater could be good for your theater's health. And if diversity, inclusion, equality, or equity, or whatever you want to call it, is not a priority, or isn't something your company and your board of directors talk about or consider, you should ask yourself, why not? The world is changing faster than any of us could have ever imagined. LA is a minority majority city. Shouldn't your theater reflect that? Don't be a dinosaur. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.